uh, as long as I feel I am a separate individual with my own imaginary identity, there is no question of liberation for me. Because my separate entity is an imaginary, non-existing pink elephant under my sofa. A non-existing thing cannot get liberation. So this character Ramesham with a contracted body and a limited dimensions, that can never get liberation. Like the dreamer of last night's nice dream, when you slept, what liberation can that dreamer get? When you wake up, the dream has ended, that, that guy has ended along with all that world and other characters in that dream, just they disappeared. So what, what liberation can you give to that character? So as long as I imagine myself as a separate character here, there is no question of any liberation for me. And this consciousness which is enabling me to view things, understanding things, that does not require any liberation because that is self is doing whatever it is all to be done. So really speaking there is neither liberation nor seeking nor a seeker, something to be sought. Now how do you formulate your question in the light of this? Is there a practice or a way to change my thought process to experientially get what you're saying? Yeah, yeah this is the critical part we have to realize. Whatever is making you to make these statements, to articulate all these words, that consciousness is already what you are not this little shape or a body that has been born on some date which is asking you to utter these words. No, the body does not do that, your mind cannot do that. That consciousness within you is able to understand and utter these words, right? So this physical body by itself can never have any liberation. It will disintegrate, decay and disappear. The mind also is equally inert. It will also disintegrate and disappear. The consciousness by itself, it does not require any liberation either. Whatever you are is already that consciousness. It does not require any liberation. So who is there really seeking liberation? There is nobody except this false image. So whoever is talking is already conscious, is already there. You are it. So it doesn't require a process to become something. You are that. So you, to, you require a process, a method to become something. I, I have coffee powder here. I have to make coffee. So there is a procedure. When I make coffee, I don't have any more this coffee powder. If I give you coffee and I, or if I make an omelette and ask you to get me back the egg, I can't do it. So that is total modification. You are changing something by a process, egg to omelette, coffee powder to coffee. You know, some, some change I can do and get a new thing through a process, through action. Process is an action. Here I don't have any new thing to be obtained. You are consciousness. Whoever is speaking is consciousness. So nothing is to be done really. Only thing as we talk in very first time, you know, we have to be reminded only. Oh, you are forgetting. You are already that. Like the tenth man story. You are already that. The tenth man is already there. So only remember. Don't forget you are that. And in the earlier analogy also in that wholeness, Mind is happening within that wholeness, a little perturbation. So don't 
think this little perturbation is a separate entity and I am here separately. Just remember you are all within it, you are, part, you, you know, you are not separate. So there is no process there to be done. No process can yield also. But earlier we gave the example of the pond being clearer, clear water and less of turbulence. So at the most you can do some exercises to bring that little clarity. But to uh, get this understanding itself, you don't have to do anything. You just have to understand that. that uh, know that, or remember that. You are all within that. You are not separate. So these little exercises like meditation or uh, uh, worship, prayer or breathing exercises, pranayama, they will all help only to let the mind f focus and analyze things without prejudice, without its own colors or without its own habits influencing your conclusions. For example, if a very uh, ardent devotee is there, he will always believe in that Mary or Christ or Krishna or somebody. You cannot convince them that there is no such a entity or a person there like a, a Krishna. He, he still thinks there is a person there and I have to fall on his feet and be at his mercy. You, you can't do anything with such people. He will not get convinced. He can't analyze. So such minds which are so much habituated to a pattern of thinking and are unable to analyze, look at things without bias and prejudice, they need some exercise. Or some people will be too mercurial in their mentality. They cannot uh, concentrate or even think for five minutes on a particular topic, like the politicians, they keep shifting in their talks. So they are the guys who have to be trained to be to focus on a subject, to stay on course and discuss. But all of us are so educated, we have been going through so many complicated uh, issues like management and uh, your own technical uh, professions. We don't require that little training for our minds. Our minds and brains are well, well trained. So what we have to use our minds and brains, not for these meditations and pranayama, breathing exercises and yoga, processes and actions, they cannot help at all. They will not lead, lead, lead you anywhere. We have to analyze and be able to arrive at discriminately what is the truth. And for that we can use only certain tools. And each person has to use the tools according to his own ability and expertise and analyze. Come to this understanding. What is really that unchanging self-illuminating ultimate thing. Because you see, a body is inert in the sense it cannot understand itself, uh, uh, you know, uh, like an object, let us say. This object will not be apparent to me. I will not be able to uh, see it unless some light falls on it. Right? If, if I am able to see any object, light is falling on it. So something is illuminating it. Then I am able to visualize it. I am able to understand it. Now you are sitting, suppose, in complete darkness, in total uh, a dungeon or a tunnel. You can't feel anything, let us say you still know that you are there, your own existence, you never get a doubt, right? So what is that 
which is illuminating your ability to understand that you exist. There is something which is illuminating and therefore you are able to understand your own existence. So what is that? That is yourself. Is, there is no external torchlight coming and showing you that ability to know your own existence. So your own existence like a lamp is self-illuminating. See, a, 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 to see a lamp, I don't have to bring another flashlight and show it. It shows by itself. Like this inner object, I have to bring a flashlight and show it. Otherwise, I can't see. So like that, my own beingness, I don't require an extra flashlight from outside. I am knowing it by myself. So it is self-illuminating. Similarly, even your own knowing, you know it. Just like you know your own existence, even in the worst of unlighted conditions, you know you exist and you are, you are also conscious you are there. Right? That also doesn't require any external flashlight. So consciousness or knowingness, your own beingness or existence, they are self-evident. That, that is called a self-effulgent or self-illuminating. So your own self being self-illuminating, no extra actions from outside are to be brought. You just have to remember you are that. All other, you know, the gimmicks, logic, the yoga, the, all these asanas and postures, you know, they are good to give you a healthy body and keep a healthy mind to the extent that you are able to analyze these things. So this consciousness as in the existence of what you are really can appear in all shapes and forms and sizes and colors and flowers and anything you can think of. You, you must have seen these extrusion uh, products like aluminum, extrusion products like channels for the windows or they are tubes or elbows. So they come in so many varieties of fantastic shapes. So, but the basic material is same aluminum, right? Molten aluminum. It is extruded into various shapes. So this existence, consciousness, happiness gets extruded like this, this table here, that glass there, like bar there, like her or you or me, you know. These are all different shapes that same uh, material is extruded into. So consciousness, knowingness doesn't have to appear in a spe fixed, specific, some shape. So remembering that, that inherently within me is that and that is all around, that is all required. So no action is required. The rest of the things are all only supreme positions like this body or that body or some other character. These are the supreme positions on it. It goes back to what you said that you just finished saying the mind can't do anything, it's already there. Sorry. And you were talking about the perturbations of the mind. So the minute the mind has a perturbation or makes any movement, then by definition it's moved away from its awareness of consciousness. No, no, no. No, no first of all, mind and perturbation are not two things. That perturbation, another name is mind. Right. Okay? That ripple, rippling itself is mind. Now this rippling is happening within this consciousness. It's not separate. But you had said that when the perturbation stops, then mind becomes consciousness. Yes. The, uh, 
you are right. It's a perturbation totally stopping is consciousness. Because it's all happening within consciousness, that's its consciousness. So there's nothing to do because if the mind does anything, if the mind does any perturbation, then... No, mind doesn't do perturbation. Perturbation is mind. Right. Okay? Perturbation happening. Another name is mind. But, but so perturbation happens, that is mind. Yeah. Lack of mind is... Consciousness. consciousness. Right. So... For anyone to ask what they should do, that's to suggest that they be mind, be perturbation, but no action is required because it's all lack of it. mind, lack of perturbation, and mind is just consciousness. No, even if perturbation is there, it is consciousness. Perturbation is not happening outside consciousness. The difficulty is coming because this little perturbation happening there thinks it is separate. So don't think you are separate. This, the thinking of separation is the cause. It's not the perturbation per se. Let perturbation happen. Let the world be there. This perturbation is the appearance of the world. So let the world be there. Don't have to stop the world. Only thing is, this little perturbation, instead of remaining as perturbation, thinks it is separate from the rest of the thing. So that sense of separation has to end. That's all. The thought of separation has thought to end. The belief of separation. That belief, or, that's, that's all. That means, you know, when perturbation happens, or you imagine like this, there is a surface of what the water surface in the pond, when you throw a stone, there are so many ripples coming up, right? So many ripples come. A couple of ripples, or one ripple here thinks it is separate from the rest of the pond. And then it, it may add up a few more junk it collects, you know, some little floating, floats some jetsums on the, on the water surface, it collects, and it thinks this is my body. This is my character, this is my food, or this is my character, or the, uh, I behave like this. It, it, you know, all those little floatsome junk that is floating on this ripple, it collects and it thinks they are all his, and all others are not his. So it starts feeling separate, and it wants to protect that lip, ripple surface, and uh, that floatsome on it. Can you imagine uh, the picture I am giving? And this little thing which thinks it is separate and trying to protect itself as if it is all away from the rest of the lake and other ripples, that causes misery to it. But from distance you can see that is only a, just one ripple. There is no significance though for those little junk which is floating right there around it. If it thinks a separate individual there and it has to do something for the other ripples and change the floats, floating things or insects there, dead bodies to be different everywhere also. It doesn't work. So what this has to do, do what this has to do is, it is foolish to think I am separate. I am just one cog in the whole machinery. Suppose there is a clockwork mechanism. There are so many wheels r running in the clock, right? In the old clocks at least, not the electronic ones. So many uh, wheel, uh, wheels with teeth will be moving one, you know. Each wheel cannot think it's a separate one. It's one total thing in the whole mechanism. Each little wheel may have its own shape, its own uh, the number of teeth around it. They are all different, they, depending upon the rotations it has to take. But it's all one. It, it, this cannot separately function. One little wheel cannot separately function. Or uh, Rupert gives this nice analogy of a TV screen. There is a story going on, say, in the, uh, a movie going on, on the TV. There is one character on one side, another character on the other side. If this character thinks it's separate, 
and it has to dictate all other characters and all other parts of the TV screen, it does not happen. Right? This character will also just disappear. The character may disappear, that image may disappear, TV screen will always be there. So, consciousness is basically the TV screen, it never goes anywhere. Temporarily, it is appearing as that little image there here, as a lady or as a tree or something. And this tree and the image and you know, even if there is a depth to it, really speaking there is no depth or any dimensions in that, it is just flat screen. So, even this world is just flat like that. It is just one experience where we think there is a depth in it. That is why you know in your experience, your uh, Deborah's experience, the depth is coming as we move, otherwise there is no depth. Just like this TV screen, I see even in that uh, scenery there, as if there is a depth there, there is a road going and there is a building walls and all that. If I go and touch, it is just flat. So, the whole experience, even if I am seeing this as a 3D here, is just one experience right now including the sound here, the lights here, the walls, everything is just one whole experience. I cannot really fragment it. I mean, there is no reason to, you know, there, there is one person, one, unless I start naming these entities separate, it is all one. So, the little floatsums in the triple. Neither that ripple, those floatsums happen to be there. It acquires ownership to them and keeps climbing that as itself, which is not true, it does not work. That is why even if some earthquake is happening right now somewhere or a volcano is bursting, it's all, we are all part of it. It is not that I am not affected, if somebody is murdering somebody, it is not that I am not affected, it is all one. I cannot disclaim any ownership to it. So, what anybody can do is remember we are all, I mean, I am all this one, I am not separate. So, ending of separation is the only thing you have to do. And how do you end that separation? It is not something you have to acquire from somewhere, it is not any becoming one in the whole thing. That little ripple is anyway in the pond only, it does not have to do specially any process, take any action to be part of the whole. It is already there, only it has to be reminded, oh good, you are, you are already in the lake and you are not little, one ripple here is a whole rippling is taking place. What, what action can that ripple take to become one in the whole thing? It is already one, so you are already one. You do not have to do any action. You do not have to become one. You are already one. So, only thing is I, I must not forget it. I may not, I, I should not allow that thinking that I am separate. So, the key is not allowing the thinking that I am separate. I am separate. Because that is the separation. That brings separation. The thought that I am separate brings in the separa separation and misery. You see, even the food we eat, that is why in uh, the Indian culture, in you, you are all familiar with Bhagavad Gita, right? There is one beautiful verse. Uh, Brahma Panam Brahma Havir Brahma Gnau Brahmana Hutam Brahmena Tena Gantavyam Brahma Karma Samadhina that Brahman comes everywhere. The, the eater, no, not the eater, the, the one who is offering is Brahman. What is being offered is Brahman. The offering is done through a fire, altar, because when you offer in a ritual, you put into a sacred holy fire. 
So, that fire is Brahman, which is carrying the thing to Brahman. So, who is offering? He is Brahman. What is being offered, that food or whatever your offering is, that is Brahman. It is being offered into the fire, which is Brahman, and it goes to the Brahman. So, everything is nothing but Brahman. It is all oneness. Only the sense of separation is the problem that comes along. When you feel you are separate here and you have to protect yourself and treat the rest of the world as if it is separate. So, the, I think this analogy is works much better, you know, is a big pond, a ripple happens and the ripples go on continuing and on a ripple a few particles or dead insects gathered and if that group of insects and that ripple thinks that it is separate from the whole of the pond, it just does not work and it, and it does not have to do anything to become part of the pond, right? It is already pond, it is, it is in the pond, it is the pond. So, it does not have to do something to become the pond. So, all our efforts to be that supreme Brahman, there is nothing, there is no effort to be required, to be done, there is no action to be done. So, we would remember our oneness, but for our thought of separation. Right. Thought of separation uh, and self-perpetuation. We want to perpetuate ourselves. That means, perpetuate the separation also. As long as that continues, struggle will, suffering will be there, seeking will be there. But all this being said, still it will not be enough if Laru eats food or I eat food, Laru does not have to eat or you do not have to eat. At the level of the worldly transactions, these actions have to be done. Like in your dream body, I mean as a dreamer in your dream world, if you feel hungry, you eat the dream food, right? You have to eat the dream food. So, like that, this world, you have to eat that food. So, all actions that are taken to sustain your body from the point of its appearance, which we call as birth, to the point of its death, these actions will not have any carry forward effect. So, the scriptures put it in a different way. Broadly speaking, we have five action organs and five sensory organs. Five actions are the, the limbs, legs, hands, mouth and the two excretory organs, five. Actions that are done by these five action organs by themselves have no effects at all, no carry forward effect. That means, it is like the dream dreamer eating the dream food. Now, you have five sensory organs, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, skin. So, these five sensory organs, even if the body is not doing anything, if they act, that will have a carry forward effect. So, what you have to be conscious of these five sensory organs plus of course, the mind which is behind them, they are, that really drives these five sensory organs. So, whatever mind and these five sensory organs are involved, that is the place where you have to be cautious about. Otherwise, actions done for the pure sustenance of the body, its maintenance is totally harmless. So, the mind and the five sensory organs have to act in such a way that there is no carry forward effect of it, because any action taken will have some result. So, the result here will have to be experienced by you. The result will have to be experienced by you 
if you do it with this sense of separation, I am a separate individual here, I am the ego. So, with that ego consciousness and the, with the sense of separation, if I do, that doer has to necessarily experience the result. So, if you do not have a doer as, at all, there is no ego at all. Even, even, even if actions are done without a doer, then there is nobody even to enjoy the results or experience the results. So, this is the other key they give. One thing is at the level of action organs, whatever actions take place, they are totally harmless, goes on. Then at the sensory organ and mind level, let there be no ego which claims ownership and doership. Ownership for all the possessions, doership for all the actions, including your decision making. I am not the decision maker. Things are happening. I do not know. So, the moment you give up the ego and the doership and ownership, then automatically you are already free. This is called as relinquishment, vairagya, that is the relinqu detachment, dispassion. So, other key is dispassion or detachment and non doership. So, the moment non doership and total detachment are observed, this sense of separateness is ending. So, sense of separation ending, you are already that consciousness, nothing else. So, all this theory sounds nice. So, when I go to the office tomorrow morning, some fellow makes a dirty comment. What happens then? Then, then suddenly whole thing breaks down and the only this is nice to listen to. They of course, the little uh, you know discretion and uh, the subtle uh, action discrimination has to be used. So, to some extent living in this world, it may f one feels and perhaps it is also difficult totally to be detached. If tomorrow somebody is strips you down and robs you totally, I mean, is that the sort of uh, egolessness and uh, detachment I have to feel? So, these are the sort of debatable questions. Even Nisargadatta Maharaj and people like that were asked these questions. So, he said, if such thing happens, the body by its own built-in mechanisms of self-protection, it may save itself or it may succumb. I have nothing to do with it. So, that sort of detachment comes. You see, suppose you try to beat me right now, I, I may resist it, I may stop or I may beat you again to protect, this, this body may beat you again to protect itself. So, anything can happen, we cannot project, we cannot predict. Similarly, so tomorrow morning, if in the office some fellow behaves dirtily, immediately there could be a bit of a, an expression of annoyance or resistance. Matter ends there again, you just walk. But if I start thinking, oh, I should not have done that, this is bad thing, or I should, I should have behaved like a Buddha, it does not work. At that moment, that spontaneous behavior happened. Uh, that is the end of the matter. Similarly, if some strange, uh, I mean, a, a, an orphan child is on the roadside, at that moment you may feel like giving something, something and give and you go on your way, nothing else. Suppose at that moment you have not given, you have not given, over. Okay, the total pond is there, there some ripple happens somewhere, something. I mean, she is already feeling sleepy two, three times you are trying to resist your… Uh, <laughs> eh? Shall we stop here? What is the time? <laughs>